Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Wright here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Memoria Freeze video. And today we're going to be going over all the Australia record units and we're going to be tier listing them in the order of the buffs they received. So how good of a buff did they receive? We're going to be ranking that and along with that we're going to be trying to see if we can influence the ranking potentially based on the teams they can get into now this is a little bit more trickier and the reason why it's not the main factor of this tier list is because they have so many different teams and compositions in the game right now with you know some units being great for pve some being great for pvp some being great for certain teams of pvp but then obviously in those certain teams of pvp we have hero festas and stuff like that so it's really hard to judge it based on teams what we're gonna judge it on primarily is how good of a buff did they receive are they usable now are they are they nearing the upper echelons or did they receive such a bad buff that they're unusable so that's all the factors we're going to look at today of course if you guys want to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more danmachi and danmachi memoria freeze content and leave a comment down below letting me know who do you guys think got the best buff out of the lot i'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below now before we get into the video and before we get into the actual tier listing, I have to also address the fact that we are missing two units that haven't received their buffs yet. And, well, we have to assume they're going to be receiving buffs because they are going to be rerunning. And that is the Zard and Alfia from right before the 4th anniversary. Now, right before the 4th anniversary of Danmachi Memorial Freeze, we got the first rerun of Australia Record because they love doing the previous year's anniversaries as a rerun before the new anniversary comes out, right? That's something that they've loved doing since, like, I think it was the second anniversary. So, this has been pretty much tradition, effectively, right now. Um, and we got a new Zard, Alfia, and Bell during that period. Now, unfortunately, it does seem like we're not going to be getting the Bell in this rerun that is coming up for that Zard and Alfia, which is really weird. But we are getting the Zard and Alfia, and they're very likely to get buffs. But... I am not including them in this tier list today because one, we don't know what their buffs are and two, I feel like it's a little bit better to, you know, go over the buffs for the original set first and foremost because there is a very good chance that the 4th anniversary Zard and Alfia are going to be way better than these guys in all honesty in terms of their buffs. They're probably going to get into the S ranks very, very easily. So instead, I decided, you know what, let's do these guys today and then when they come out, when we do the Should You Summon, I will add them to this tier list even though they will probably end up in the s rank but that's for us to wait and see that will be done in two weeks time when we actually get the buffs i think it's actually one week from now actually at the time of this recording it's about a week and a half away when we get the news for what buffs they will potentially get so be on the lookout for that stay subscribed for all that jazz of course all the news on Dan Mimo. i will be covering it so Let's get into the video now. Let's get into the buffs and let's see where I will rank all of these units. Now, I think I'm going to start off with an assist first and foremost. And I think I'm going to start off with Alan because I feel like Alan is probably the easiest one out of the lot. He's probably the best unit we've received in this update in terms of buffs and stuff. He's an easy S rank. He's probably the, uh, I mean, he is effectively an equivalent to the 5th anniversary of Yulu. Literally, he is an equivalent to that. So, in all honesty, that makes him an easy S rank unit. You see Ryulu being run still to this day in war games, right? So, the fact that uh, they made Alan have the same agility debuff, decent, you know, otherwise buffs and assist skill buffs. So, for me personally, I think that's an easy S rank. I don't have to add too much more on Alan. I think he is a fantastic unit in all honesty. It's just a shame that he is on a banner with Otaro and Ryu, who we will come on to later on in the video. But, yeah, I think Alan is a fantastic assist. On the other hand, Seer... I don't know what they were thinking. I actually do not know what they were thinking. You know what? I think I have uh, the page up right now, right? Uh, let me actually see if I, we can go over here. I think it's this one, if I'm not mistaken. I hope uh, it looks all right on your screens right now. But let's go all the way to the bottom. This is Seer's buffs, right? So Seer went from having a P res and M res minus 15% and null ailment times 3 to just being given God Raid minus 15%. That is the most useless pieces of buffs I've ever seen on any unit in all honesty. I, I don't know what they were thinking with this uh with this buff in all honesty. This was really unnecessary. I think the best thing that they could have done in all honesty was just literally all they had to do was turn that times 3 into a times 4 and she would have been fantastic. Honestly, she would have been so much better. 
but instead they just gave her god rate minus 15 percent which makes her a much 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 weaker option than what we were hoping she could have been in all honesty so seer easy d rank i'm very unimpressed with what they did with her and i'm very 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 disappointed with what they did with her because she's a unit i still use because all my other null ailment times four units are only at plus one and plus two um, maybe a maximum of plus three, so they're all utterly useless in comparison to Seer or anybody else. So as a result, I still have to use Seer. Maybe that's where also some of the um, hatred comes from for what they did to her, to be quite honest. Um, let's go on to an adventure, I think. Let's go on to an adventure. We've put two assists and we've started off really well with one being in S rank, one being in D rank. I think the next adventure we will go for is probably going to be Eyes. I think we'll start off with Eyes as our first adventure. And Eyes, Eyes, Eyes. What can I say about her? I think a lot of people don't really care too much about her and i can see why in all honesty because i don't know what they were thinking eyes is somebody we can actually look up right here right and i can already tell you one of the biggest issues she had was the fact that they only gave her plus 70 percent per buff basically 70 percent damage per buff In initially on paper it seems good right but then obviously going from nothing right it's only a temporary great strength boost and now you're making it a 70 percent per strength uh buff skill right which is great but the thing is, right, you have other units within the Astrea record, you, uh, you know, parts effectively, the rerun itself, that received a much better buff. Riveria, I think Riveria's is 160% in total. Eyes is only 140%. Otaro, 200%. So I don't get why they made Eyes so weak in comparison to those two. And not only that, I love the fact that they gave her Militant, which was a much better buff, right? This is really, really good. I love the, I love what they did with her here. But then you look at the rest of the kit and it's just a question of what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Because her best skill, her super wind physical attack, only has a temporary strength boost it doesn't even have a damage modifier which means that this temporary strength boost if i'm not mistaken is only a 40 percent strength boost in all honesty there's nothing else to it there is no you know 80 percent damage per strength buff skill there's no 60 percent even i i understand that because this is 70 percent they couldn't have gone crazy but even if they gave 50% per strength boost skill. I think I would have taken that to be quite honest. I would have ranked her much higher. But right now, based on all of this, I'm not going to lie. She'll be very usable in wind record busters and stuff like that. But frankly speaking, I don't think her buffs were really that good. In all honesty, I don't think she got good buffs whatsoever. I think her buffs were pretty disastrous. And I think they could have done way better with her. I think they could have done way, way, way better with her. Um, now, let's move on to another unit that's extremely popular. Uh, a unit that was utilized in so many war game seasons. It's not even funny. She was in the top 25 until recently on NA. And I know somebody mentioned in my comment section actually that she was still in like the top 15 units in EU. And that is this Water Arty. Now, I don't know how to feel about this Water Arty because in all honesty, I don't think they could have gone crazy with her buffs because otherwise she would have actually replaced the new RD, um, the time limited RD we got a few months ago, right? The wind one. Um, so they couldn't have gone crazy with her and you can tell that they didn't go crazy with her because their special arts is kind of atrocious. You're not going to use it anyways. But even her skill one and skill two, while they got some okay-ish buffs, right? Better HP region, I think it was. I think they also gave her uh, a little bit more uh, physical res and magic res to give allies a little bit of a better debuff as well. I mean, if we go over to the original one, right? If we go down here, um, you can see that they've increased the, uh, yeah, they increased the P res and M res a little bit. They obviously added critical, uh, critical rate, penetration rate, and counter rate down along with P res and M res. So, they did do an okay job, but even then, I don't know if the buffs were good enough. She'll be usable for sure, and I think she'll find a place in a lot of players' teams because of how good she is. I think she's a, easily at least a B or A rank unit, where she's still a usable option for players who may not have units like, say, for example, Vesta or anybody like that, right? And you need an option at plus 5 who's capable, capable of helping the team survive. Helping the stall team effectively, right? If you're using a stall team. But I do think in terms of buffs, 
it wasn't that amazing. Um, I think I would put her in C. There is a part of me that wants to put her in B, but I'm going to put her in C. Better than Ice, though. Better than Ice, for sure. She'll be on the higher end of C, for sure. Absolutely think that's going to be the case. Now, I want to move on to Riveria. Riveria, I think, got very solid buffs. I think I'll put her in... A. I think A makes sense. I think there's still some things that would that is making me stop her. Uh, st uh, that is making me stop uh, from putting her uh, in S rank. In all honesty, I think a couple of things include like maybe putting this at ninety percent or hundred percent. Again, Otaro got two hundred percent. Why didn't you give her two hundred percent as well? Right. Um. This is only one sixty percent in total. And furthermore, I think maybe making this like seventy five percent or seventy percent would have made her insane. I still think she's gonna be a very very good option for players who need a record buster unit and you can make an argument and say s rank easily but i think i'm gonna hold on a little bit maybe at the end of this video we might do some rejects and i'll put her in s rank but right now i think i'm gonna put her in a rank for now for now um all right so let's move on to another assist now let's move on to another assist and i'm gonna do asfi next and again i think asfi is an s rank unit because what she's basically become is a Kid Felice, a 25% damage increase from single target attacks and all the other buffs that she gives. I think arguably she is better than Kid Felice as an option if you have her at plus 5. In all honesty, low key, I might do that in all honesty. I might do that as somebody who also kind of prefers Record Buster to War Games, right? I'm a bigger fan of Record Buster than War Games content. I think I would put Asfi higher up than, uh, you know, Alan, to be quite honest, in all honesty. Um, I think I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to be happy with what I've done there. And I think uh, Asfi goes into S rank as well. Uh, the next unit we're going to go for, I think, is Gareth. Gareth got really bad buffs, in all honesty. I don't, I, I don't think he got good enough buffs. And I think he's probably the worst unit out of the whole Astray record set. At least Seer still has some form of usability even though you shouldn't go for her she still has some form of usability you have eyes and Artie who still have some form of usability riveria and osfi and uh, uh, alan are on uh, another level but gareth gareth man what did they do to you my guy they didn't do anything that's the problem they didn't do at anything at all it is really really not that good in all honesty because yes on paper it does seem like well you know then i should put potentially this alfia down with him but no there are two different units entirely and the teams they operate in are two different teams entirely uh, Gareth isn't a great option and especially because if you look at the other un units that are available especially if you look at units like Nocturnal Elf Ryu you look at Galmuses and all those units right and how they help with being an actual stall unit an actual stall building a stall team this Gareth is not that great in all honesty and I wouldn't stand for Alfia slander we'll come on to Alfia in just a moment but Gareth, in all honesty, got a really, really bad set of buffs. I don't know what they were thinking, in all honesty. I really don't know what they were thinking. Um, the next unit I want to tackle is actually another member of the stall team. Um, and another potential candidate, I should say, for the stall team. And that is the Shakti. I think Shakti got some decent buffs, in all honesty. I mean, if you take a look at the buffs that uh, Shakti got right... I think she got some decent buffs. It's just a shame that, unfortunately, it's just that I feel, well, she doesn't have a spot on any of the teams. I mean, it's really, really sad to say that, but I think she's got some really good uh, skills, right? She's giving p res, m res, and damage reduction by 30% from all target attacks, which is great. And then she obviously gives HP heal, you know, uh, extends status uh, buffs on allies, uh, you know, reduces the status debuffs on allies. Um, and is able to, you know, debuff the enemy's strength and magic as well as improve the heal of the uh, allies, right? I think overall she's good. It's just that I think, again, she's come out at a time where the stall team is just flooded with a massive set of options, right? And as a result, I think that's what's going to lack her, uh, result in her not being available on so many of these stall teams, unfortunately. I do think she's a great option if you don't have certain members of the stall team, but... Yeah, I think uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, she's unable to get into a stall team and in, uh, is unable to uh, penetrate through a team effectively. And if you look at her kit, right, um, the other issue is if you look at her kit, right, she just doesn't have a position to be in in terms of PvE content either. So that's where she's going to lack as well. So it comes into a situation where her buffs are good, 
but it's not good enough to put her on a team. You know, if I were to look at a team uh, composition with her, I would probably say maybe C or B. But as a buff, I would probably say A or B in all honesty. But I'll put her in B for now um, because I feel like that's a safe spot to put her in. Um, next, I think we will go with uh, Alize, the first Alize, I suppose. And I think Alize got some really solid buffs. Uh, part of me wants to put her uh, in S, but I think I'm going to put her in high A. I think one of the biggest issues she got, uh, unfortunately, and I think she got one of the biggest buffs in all honesty because they kind of changed her kit quite drastically. Because I think they moved her fast skill from the first skill to the second skill, which changed her entirely because at a point she was part of the burst fire physical team. And the reason why she was capable of being on that team is because her first skill was fast. Now they inverted it basically and put the fast skill on the second skill, which kind of actually reduces her playtime on those sort of teams. But still, putting her, putting her on a PvE team or even still a physical team, she'll still do a fantastic job. So I think putting her in A, I can make an, I can see and even make an argument for her in S, but I think I'm going to put her in A for now. And then maybe retroactively we can come in and change it later on in the video. Um... Now, 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 now. Let's see who, who do we want to pick. I think we will go with Zard. I think Zard's buffs makes him an S rank unit in all honesty. Well, no, I should clear it up. His buffs are S rank. I think that, that his buffs make him like an A or B rank unit. Because originally my guy was like a D or C rank unit. I think he got some amazing buffs in all honesty. They did a fantastic job with Zard. Increasing his taunt chance. Giving him all those extra sort of effects on his additional attacks. All of that jazz. The light attack damage bonus as well. Brilliant, brilliant decision for them to have made such a huge change for Zard. I think... You know, at a point, there was never a time where Zard would be a mainstay on anybody's team. I know so many people tried, and uh, there was a little bit of copium at times in terms of like, oh, you, you, Zard is still usable, but no, he wasn't. Let's be real, he wasn't. The only good he was on was pretty much basically the uh, ailment team because of his 30% chance to taunt, which is now a 50% chance, by the way, so it makes him even better for that team, um, along with his KO survivability. But I think they did a fantastic job with him. Um, easy S rank buffs, honestly, easy S rank buffs. I would probably say he's easily an A rank unit, though, at the same time. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic job with Zord. I, I'm very, very impressed. This is the first time I've actually been genuinely happy about Danmachi doing good buffs, you know? It's rare to see Danmachi doing good buffs, okay? Uh, you know, there used to be a time where all the buffs that we would get would put these units in, like, B, C, or D, to be quite honest, more often than not. But the fact that I'm able to put some of these units in S rank and A rank is a big thumbs up from my end, in all honesty. A big thumbs up. Um, all right, let's move on to, I think, the... Let's go with the... Uh, I don't know who to go with next. Otaro, let's go with Otaro. I'm gonna go with Otaro next. Otaro, I think, got B rank assists, I would say. I uh, 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 Assists? I mean, B rank buffs, I think, in all honesty. I think some solid buffs... Um, they didn't improve him drastically. I still think there's still some issues with his counter ability and his second skill being weak. But the thing is, you're not going to use his second skill. Generally, he got some really solid buffs. I'm probably going to put him over uh, Shakti because I feel like at least a Tarl you can still use in Wrecked Buster and stuff like that. So I think you're going to be uh, seeing a Tarl go into some potential Earth teams with like Lazar and stuff like that. Possibly, possibly. So solid position there for Otaro. Ryu, very disappointing buffs. I think uh, maybe mm, lo lower than eyes. I don't like what they did with Ryu because a lot of the issues I have with Ryu come from what they did with her generally in terms of her kit. Um, some decent adjustments, some decent adjustments, but generally speaking, I'm very unimpressed with what they've decided to do with her in all honesty. Um, no damage modifier on her special arts. It's only a temporary grade magic boost, which is okay, fine, sure. But then even her third skill, which is a single target, Target skill only has a t temporary great magic boost, no damage modifier, like 80% uh, per magic boost or something, or wind attack damage boost. I don't know. And then on top of that, you give yourself 70% damage, wind attack damage, but then give allies also wind attack damage plus 35%. It's a bit contradictory where she gives herself buffs, but then she's also trying to support allies, which kind of makes things a little bit weird in all honesty. I like the I like that they did some things like, for example, adding wind res down and all that jazz, giving agility to allies and all that. It, it's great, but there are some things that I feel could have been done better, and I feel like they just made her a very confused unit. So I'm going to put her in C personally. I know some people will disagree with me on that one, but I don't like her buffs. I do not like her buffs whatsoever. All right, 
Now, we're going to take a look at some assists right now. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Finn first and foremost. Finn also got really disappointing buffs. I think they could have done a little bit better with him. Uh, I think I'm going to put him in D as well. It was only a 5% STR and magic increase, which was kind of stupid in all honesty. 33% um, SA gate charge, and uh, it was 10% across the board in terms of status buffs, basically, right? Um, post buff, he basically got a 5% increase to the strength and magic buff. And it became 15%. The rest of the status buffs became were still 10%, I should say. And the SA gate charge buff was still 33%. This guy needed probably like 44% SA gate charge, which would have been amazing. Or even at least buffing up all the uh, ally stats to like 15%. And I think that would have made him way better. He needed something. He needed something a little different. And all he got was just a 5% SJR and magic boost, which wasn't significant enough. In, in all honesty... It wasn't significant enough. Very disappointing. And uh, as a result, he'll stay in D rank, unfortunately, with Seer and Gareth. Now, let's move on to Adventure Finn. I think his buffs were decent. Nothing game-breaking or revolutionary. But I do think it made him just a bit better. Just a generally a little bit better. I, I don't think he got, like, ridiculous buffs. But they increased it, uh, they improved it just a teeny tiny bit and, and enough to make him somewhat usable, I'd say. Um, the only thing I would probably say that they missed out on him and the reason why I'm probably putting him at the low end of B is that these uh, removal buffs, basically, right? The debuff by three turns, removing all the buffs by three turns. Uh, I think it needed to be more, especially now that units are having like five, six turn buffs, right? They needed to make this guy, you know, have a, re a reduction effect of minus three turns or something like that. Or minus four turns or five turns, I should say. I think that would have made him so much better. Maybe at least four turns. I think it should have been four turns. The fact that it's still only three turns isn't very impressive and uh, potentially not going to be useful enough. So that would be my thing uh, with him. Otherwise, I think generally speaking, if you look at his kid, I mean, he's got the damage boost per buff skill. He's got, you know, the uh, ally support and everything of that sort. So I think overall, he's still good. It's just that he's missing some things that would make him way better. Um, let's move on to Althea. I think Althea is next. And I think I'm going to put her in... Hmm... High B. I, I think there are some things with Althea that they could have done a little bit better, right? Um, if we look over here, right? I think they did a good job in some places, right? For example, uh, guaranteeing the Null M attacks, removing the M magic and agility debuffs. Um, obviously giving her agility debuffs minus 40% on her second skill along with light res, uh, along with the light res debuff, light, uh, light attack damage plus 50% to all allies. I think this is solid, but I think they could have done a little bit better, making it a little bit better, maybe potentially, maybe if they had made this slow or something, I don't know. I don't know what they could have done. It just feels like they kind of did the bare minimum and called it a day, whereas Zard, they just worked on him massively, right? Which obviously makes sense because Althea was always the bigger danger of the two. I mean, if you went up against light magic teams in the past, you would know. Um, back in year three, year four, I remember a lot of people using that bell from the third anniversary. This Althea as well together. They would just run rampant around everybody, run circles around everybody. So I think I can see why they didn't go crazy with her because otherwise she would have probably destroyed the meta. But yeah, I think I'm going to put her in B. I think I'll put her in B. Um, Kagia, Lyra, and Elise. We'll do one by one. We'll go uh, adventure assist, adventure assist, adventure assist, and wrap us up there. So Elise, I think, is a A rank unit on the lower side of A rank. I think they did a good job with her overall. I do think that they made her in, in a very interesting way. The only issue is I don't know why they didn't increase her magic. Uh, but also, just generally, I'm very surprised that they decided to go down the route of uh, basically making her a sort of like stall unit effectively, right? Part of the stall team which is very very interesting i'm very curious to see how this turns out and how good she'll be but i do think generally speaking in terms of uh you know being great for pve content she'll be amazing she'll honestly be fantastic she'll go extremely well with the hero festa elise so that's why i'm putting her in a rank i think for pve contents they give her a good set of buffs right especially the single target skill and everything right along with the um additional uh the special arts and the additional attack she gets from that i think that makes her a great option Astrea, 
Astrea is a C. I think they did a good job giving her the MP regen and stuff, right? Especially because I know some people oh, wanted the MP regen, especially for a unit like, for example, uh, Nocturnal Elf Ryu, in order to be able to get her, uh, you know, uh, her, uh, what's it called? Her null attacks off again, right? Uh, being able to get her null attacks off again. It can, it can help. The 20 MP per heal per turn can help. So I think generally that is a decent enough option. I mean, it would if they'd given her null physical and M attack times two, easily s rank but i think obviously i really i think they realized that it would have been too op potentially um kaguya uh decent buffs i would probably put her in b uh, as well um solid buffs again great for pve contents still a little lacking in uh, you know um uh, war games and stuff which is going to be which would be, would have been her uh you know cookie and uh her, her milk and cookies is that the word Bread and butter, bread and butter, there we go. I don't know why I forgot the saying, I completely forgot the saying, uh, but her bread and butter would have been war games primarily, but unfortunately they didn't do enough with her, I feel. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe C. I remember, I'm remembering her showcase in my head now. Of course, I, if you haven't checked out my videos, I've done the showcases on the part one and part two units. I haven't done any on part three because I feel like it's not necessary. Um, but, uh, and especially because they're all low limit breaks for me, I think Alize is the only one at plus five. But Kaguya kind of disappointed me. So I think C for her. Erebus, I think I think Erebus got okay-ish buffs. I think he'll be he's gonna be decent. I don't think they were ever gonna go make him like a minus 25% light res down unit, especially with the light team going running amok in all forms of PvE content. Having Erebus there as well would have made things extremely broken. He's just become more of a survivability option compared to Argonaut, basically. That's about it. And I think that's good enough for him. So I think I'll put him smack dab in the middle. And Lyra, I think, got A rank buffs as well. Really good buffs, agility debuffer, magic res down, all of that jazz gives herself worth attack damage now. Very, very good option for both PvE and war games now. Fantastic, uh, fantastic buff, honestly. Um, and Freya, the magic res is nice. In all honesty, I think she got one of the best buffs in all honesty. There, and the thing is, right, even though it may not be applicable to gameplay purposes, right, maybe going up against uh, war games teams, you know, she'll be great against magic teams, but generally, if you go up against, like, say, for example, physical teams and stuff like that, she kind of isn't that great, which will probably put her down a little bit. Um, but I do think her buffs generally, in comparison to what she had originally, which was just like a base counter rate up, like, maybe like 10-20% or something. And then on top of that, maybe like uh, it was like minus 10% critical rate, guard rate, and penetration rate on enemies. It, it was just like, well, it's not that great, right? It's not that great, unfortunately. Uh, it was never that great originally. So the fact that they got, gave her so many buffs and made her a way better option, right? If you go over to... Uh, uh, where Where is it? This is the old one. One second. Let me, let me, go, to, uh, let me go to Freya one moment. Uh, let me go to Freya. Where is Freya? All right, one second. There we go. Uh, Freya should be up here somewhere. Oh, my alarm's going off. Uh, <laughs> that is not what I needed. Where, where is Freya? One second. There she is. Okay, Freya's right here. Sorry. I've, I was, like, looking for her completely but uh, up top. But, okay. But, yeah, I mean, giving her the M res and charm res along with the boosts to the 20, uh, to the god rate down, critical rate, and penetration rate debuffs, I think that makes her a fantastic option. So, I think I'll put her in A, the lower ranks of A, just because of how maybe unusable the buff can be in war games and stuff like that. Maybe in PvE, it can be a great option for survivability, but otherwise, not so much. So, there you guys have it. These are my rankings for the buffs that these units have received now remember that these aren't necessarily a position of where they are in terms of their usability because if their usability comes into play you know i would put Sh already up top in like a or s shakti would come down a little bit uh finn would come down a little bit Erebus would go up a lot more uh, freya would come down more zard would come down a little bit stuff like that that's the star sort of stuff that would happen uh but this is mainly just a indication of how i feel about their buffs how good were their buffs were they good enough and in all honesty i think they did a good job you know um it's pretty even i wasn't expecting it to be this even to be quite honest and generally speaking i think they did a good job i did think they did a good job i was expecting like so many of the units to be like in b c or d more so um but the fact that it's pretty much an even spread is very good in all honesty it's very very good but yeah you guys can let me know down below in the comments was i right wrong do you guys think i may have made a mistake here let me know in the comment section down below i'm very curious to see what you guys have to say 
say down below once again thank you guys so much for watching these videos if you guys enjoyed them please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more don machi and don machi memorial freeze content and i will see you guys in the next one take it easy everybody bye bye